So we're going to be looking at the AFS wizard that is built into the drive rack. Now, AFS stands for Automatic Feedback Suppression. Uh, it's going to help us ring out the room to try to kill as much feedback as possible uh, in the system. Uh, so we're going to do that and walk through that process now. But before we do, there's a couple of things that we need to do before we even get into the wizard. The first thing that is very, very key to doing this is microphone placement. Now, we are setting the belt packs with the microphones up on the table on stage, um, where this, roughly where the speakers would be standing during the event. But here's where we need to check something to make sure. We don't want to just lay the microphones on the table with the mic itself. Uh, resting on the table. Now, when I say the mic itself, what I'm talking about is this little piece right here on the end of the microphone. We don't want those laying on the table. What we want to do is we want to put those to where they are sticking in the air, as you see here in the picture. What I've done here is I basically flipped the microphone upside down so that it rests on the earpiece. Uh, and by doing that, it actually puts the microphone in the air instead of laying on the table. Now we're going to get a truer reading uh, of the room versus having sound bouncing off the table and directly into the microphone. So be sure and, and set your mic to where it's in the air. It is not laying flat on the table itself. So the other thing that we need to verify is on the X32 itself, uh, you know, we've loaded in the previous... Um, one of the previous videos, we went ahead and loaded the AFS sound check scene, but I want to walk through that again uh, just to remind you how to get there. So I'm going to hit my view button here on the board um, and select that, and it's going to change my view to the queue. Then I'm going to arrow over one to my scenes. I'm going to use the, uh, the knob here to select the AFS sound check. I'm going to push down, and then I'm going to press the right arrow to confirm the loading of that scene. And what that does is basically sets everything for the AFS sound check. Now, even though you've loaded that scene, one of the things you're going to want to double check is go through each one of your six channels here uh, that pertain to the microphones and make sure that the gate is turned off, compressor is turned off, low cut is turned off, and the EQ is turned off on each channel. So let's do that real quick. We've got channel number one selected. All of that is off, two, three, four, five, and six, and all of those are now uh, turned off. We verified that. So now we are ready to go into the drive rack software and load it. So to do that, we come down here to our uh, task bar. We find our DBX Venue 360 icon, select it, the software will load. It'll get connected to the drive rack, saying that it found it. So we're going to tell it to connect. And then we're going to come to our wizard button right here at the top, select it, and then come down to run AFS wizard. So we click on that, ready to go. And it says perform uh, sound check and set up rough mix for, for all mics. Check venue input volumes. Press next to continue. So what it's saying here, on the check input volumes is that on your X32, you want to make sure that your faders for the four mics that you're working with are at zero. Now, you're also going to want to make sure that your master volume over here is all the way down to start with because we'll be raising that here in just a moment. So I have verified that, yes, all of my in uh, input channels are set to where I need them. So I'm going to go ahead and press next and we get on the screen, bypass any active noise gates. We already did that uh, at the beginning before launching the wizard. So we're going to say next. Okay. So at this point, it's reminding us fully lower the main master fader, which we've already done it and the sub both. You need to make sure you have both of them down and we have already done that. Now, before I hit next, um, to move on to the next screen, let me kind of walk through the process and talk about a few things that y'all need to be aware of before we actually start this process. So what's going to happen is we're going to hit next and it's going to ask us to start slowly raising our master faders, which we are going to raise both the main and the sub together, keeping them at the same level. Uh, and we're going to work our way up 
uh, until we hit zero, and then we're going to go beyond zero. Because here's what you want to happen as you're running the AFS wizard. You want the system to ring. You want to create that feedback. So in order to do that, you're going to have to push past the volume that we would normally be at in order to get some of the tones and some of the frequencies that we need so that it can cancel those frequencies out uh, on the, the EQ of the drive rack. So you're going to want to move the volume up slowly, but not too slowly. I'll show you here when we actually go through the process, I'll show you uh, how quickly to raise it. And once the feedback starts, go ahead and continue to push a little bit more. Don't do it too fast. Again, I'll show you this as we go through the process because you want that tone to ring out and then drop off. And when you hear it drop off, then you know that the drive rack has made the necessary changes and now it's moving on to the next frequency. So we may have to raise the volume a little bit more. So as we go through that process, you'll be seeing how I'm, I'm controlling that on the board. So let's go back to our, our PC now. And so we have got our master faders down. And so we're going to hit next. And it's going to it ask us, do we want to use the default number of uh, fixed filters? My recommendation to you on this is to say no. Because six does not always catch all the frequencies that we're having problems with. So as a default, what we're going to start with, we'll say no, hit next, and it's going to ask us how many do we want to start with. Now, a good starting point is 10. So let's raise that on up to 10. That's going to try to find 10 frequencies uh, that are a problem, and it's going to do what it can to eliminate them. Now, that does not mean it will use all 10 of those filters. And if it doesn't use all 10, that's great. But a 10 is a good starting point because we've ha uh, I've had situations where selecting the 6 does not cover it well enough. So we're going to say 10, and then we're going to say next. Now, before I hit next, I'm going to quit speaking during this part because I want you to listen to the feedback in the room. And then once we're done setting the, uh, the AFS, then I'll come back and, and clarify what we did. Well, before I do that, though, it's asking us what uh, type of filters do we want? Do we want speech? Do we want music speech? Or do we want uh, just music? Keeping in mind that most of what we do during a weekend is speech. So we're going to leave that at speech and say next. Okay. So now it's asking me to raise the master volume. So let me... Jump over here to the X32 so that you can hear that or see that as I raise it. And then I'm going to quit speaking from this point on and let you listen. All right, so let me mute that mic because I'm getting a ring through that mic and my mic as well. Let's uh, go back over here and look at the computer now, uh, because what it found was it found several different frequencies because of the fact that I'm in a small room. Now, I'm going to go back and run the test again, uh, because I want you guys to see the screen and what's happening with the program. I wanted you to see the board and how I was raising the volume, and even though it started ringing, I still kept going. I didn't stop. Now, you want to stop and let it fix that ring before you move on up to the rest of the ring. So I'm going to reset my board over here, bring my faders back down, and I'm going to run this test again, but this time we're going to stay on the computer and let you guys see that uh, and see how that works. Again, I'm not going to be speaking because the microphone will pick up my voice and alter things. Uh, which, when you're doing this, you want a quiet ballroom. And so you'll need to be sure and ask people to be quiet, not to be moving chairs, not to be making noises, and especially not be having conversation up around the stage, because if you do, that will interfere with this process. So I'm going to tell it here that it's, uh, it's told me to lower my mixer outputs, which I've already done. And so now I'm going to quit speaking, and I want you guys to watch the uh, the screen. All 
All right, so we got all 10 of our filters in place. Now, if you're running this and you feel like maybe the 10 filters were not enough and you need to go on to the 12 filters, then by all means, rerun this, set to the 12 filters. The 12 is the maximum that you can do. Um, that's probably not going to happen. Now here, you notice that all 10 of our frequencies got filled up rather quickly uh, because of the fact that I'm in a small room and the feedback is, is, uh, is a whole lot worse, but in a ballroom, you're probably not going to have that problem. But if you need to use the 12, then go ahead and use the 12. So once we have gotten done with uh, running our feedback suppression, um, we're going to go ahead and hit next it gives us a graph of the frequencies that have been eliminated. And if you look down at the bottom, it'll give you the details of those frequencies. You look at the, the chart, you can see where those cuts have come uh, and how strong that signal was uh, when it cut it. And so we're gonna go ahead and hit next so that we can save this. And once you come back to your wizard screen, the drive rack has now completed the AFS setup for your feedback suppression. And at this point, you are now ready to move forward with doing your mic checks um, with the speakers. Uh, be sure before you move into the sound check with your speakers, be sure and watch the videos on dealing with EQs uh, and how to set the EQs for the individual speakers uh, so that you understand how to work that with each one.